It's an amazing irony that I'm a Bible college lecturer who is dismissed for speaking about a biblical opinion. This is my tweet. It wasn't me attacking gay people. It wasn't me even attacking pro-LGBT people. It was just naming the fact that homosexuality is invading the church because that's what I believe is happening. My tweet was about the gospel and it should be a perfectly acceptable opinion for an evangelical lecturer to share especially one who works at an evangelical Bible college. Here's the college's response, which they made uh, at the time. I didn't intend to cause the college trouble or the Methodist church, but I did warn them that an evangelical cannot express the view that homosexuality is sinful. So my tweet is just evidence of what is going to happen for many other Christians if they really want to express that view. I'm Aaron Edwards and I'm a lecturer in theology and I've recently been dismissed by Cliff College for tweeting an evangelical view about homosexuality. I joined Cliff College in 2016 and one of the things that attracted me to the college was its distinctly evangelical voice which was always there in its documentation, in its vision statements. It was solid biblically and not just willing to bow down to whatever the culture says. In terms of this issue on accepting same-sex marriage, um, over the years it has come up a few times that I've had students regularly giving me feedback that they're glad that I don't impose my view upon them and allow them to express what they really believe. And that's the difficult thing about the complaints made against me in this case that led to my dismissal. Uh, there were various people who suggested that I would make LGBT students feel harmed as a result of my tweet and in reality I have a whole track record of years of students not saying that that's the case and I've had LGBT students in my classes throughout the entire time I've been at Cliff College and so I think the issue is uh, not really substantiated from my track record that I'm going to make people feel harmed because I've always said what I believe but I've never told someone you're not allowed to disagree with me. The issue with the connection between the Methodist Church's view and the college's view is that that has been in debate for the entire time that I've been at the college. So when I joined the college, the Methodist Church had not uh, made a decision on same-sex marriage. Uh, when that finally went through in 2021, uh, the college adopted what the Methodist Church decided upon. And so what my argument has been, if this is going to stay an evangelical college, which the college wants to do, we want to stay evangelical, we don't just want to become progressive and align everything with the progressive end of Methodism. So in staying evangelical, we have a commitment to be able to speak out the fullness of the evangelical view on marriage. And that, in the case of my uh, tweet, that's kind of what happened. I tweeted what I believe is a, a serious issue for the gospel, that homosexuality is invading the church, which is what I believe, it's what I stand by, it's what most of the global church believes. Um, I tweeted it in light of the recent Anglican blessings for same-sex marriage um, and that's basically the issue here that my tweet generated a lot of response because people read it as homophobic. This is my tweet, um, I, I've written homosexuality is invading the church which the language of invasion people are troubled by but I don't think it's inappropriate for what is happening to the church at this time with the culture at this time in the way that an idea, an ideology from the world is coming into the church. So invading is the language that I use and I think it's biblically appropriate to use that when sin is being baptised or sanctified in the church. I then said evangelicals no longer see the severity of this because they're busy apologising for their apparently barbaric homophobia, whether or not it's true. This is because I believe at this time when we ought to be making a firmer stand against what's happening to the church on homosexuality, we're on the back foot apologising for all of our terrible homophobia. Now, if a church ever is homophobic, absolutely we need to call that out and people need to repent of discriminating against people harshly, hatefully, wrongly. But at, at this time, I think many people are saying this, they're apologising for homophobia because they feel like it will give them some brownie points in the eyes of the LGBT agenda. Yeah, just imagine being a gay Christian reading this from a teacher, I'd be straight onto safeguarding. Shame on you, homophobia should have no place in our society. The judgment is dripping off this tweet. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that it caused this much controversy, frankly. Um, this marriage vote has affected what I can say about the gospel as an evangelical. And I think that should make many Christians and many churches sit up 
and take notice and realize, wow, if they're even playing with rethinking what they think about marriage, this is where we're going to end up. So my situation should serve as an alarm call to those churches who are even playing with this idea. This is going to come for the gospel in the end. It is a gospel issue. That's what my tweet was all about. Here's the college's response, which they made uh, at the time. And in that tweet, they, they dissociate themselves from me and call my language inappropriate, unacceptable, and not representative of uh, the ethos or the views of the college. I, I think Twitter is a platform where, where there's a certain game that happens of these Twitter storms come up and everyone demands a public apology immediately. And you can either stand your ground or you can give in to the mob. And I think too often people give in to the mob because it's easier, whether they even agree with apologising or not, it just saves them the hassle. And I think the college, in this case, bowed to the mob and decided that they wanted to denounce me publicly rather than talk to me, uh, call me up, even have a conversation. But they've publicly tweeted about me and then suspended me the next day without any conversation whatsoever. And then when I got the investigative report, it was entirely imbalanced. I didn't get a chance to properly respond to it until my disciplinary hearing, after which I was dismissed. So very little conversation was actually had. The only time I got to air my own view, my side of the story was in my disciplinary hearing. It's been challenging. It's been a hard time for myself and my family. Uh, at first, my children weren't too unhappy that I was suspended because it meant I got to be at home <laughs> before telling them actually I'm, it's not quite like I'm not 100% dad because <laughs> I'm kind of stressed all the time having to having to engage online with some of the responses to my tweet continually not quite sure what the college is going to do all of those uncertainties not quite sure if I'm going to get a job again in higher education because everyone will think I'm homophobic uh, after the, the responses to my tweet and the lack of defense I got from the college uh, that was really challenging and thinking, what does the future hold? Where can we even pay the rent uh, going forward? What, what's going to happen? And so though I absolutely knew and, I, and, and believe that God will provide for us in some way, whatever that looks like, whatever that means, it's hard to stave off the physical manifestations of stress. I brought this up at the disciplinary hearing I said, well, either my wording is in my tweet is hate speech and you should have already reported me, or it isn't, and you shouldn't report me. Don't write it. Don't say we're considering whether we ought to do that. I found that particularly harmful, personally, to be considered uh, in line with being a terrorist for the way that I spoke, when my view is just what a, 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 an evangelical should think about sin and about homosexuality and what most of the global Christians would say about this issue. So to be considered, even considered, to be reportable to prevent for that is particularly shocking to me. I'm very happy that I've taken this stance and I'm glad to have received so much support from uh, organisations like Christian Concern and, and many others who've gotten in touch and many church leaders and churches from around the country um, who've gotten in touch with me and said how much it's given them courage to speak out what they believe. And I think sometimes it takes someone to get in trouble for saying the right thing uh, for others to have the courage to stand up and say, yeah, this is wrong. We need to stand up and say things similarly. And so that's for me why this is so important and uh, yeah, why I was willing to say what I said. So I, I, I certainly am not happy that all of this has happened to me, but I'm also overwhelmed with uh, unexpected joy at the people who've come to support me and, and those who've come out and said actually this has emboldened me and encouraged me to step out and be more uh, firm in my faith on these issues. Mm -hmm.